logical fallacies. And specifically, they use these ad hominem fallacies. They can't argue with the points that you're making, so they just start attacking the person who's making them. And I've just identified a few of these. You've got to look out for it, because whenever the left throws one of these at you, you know that you've won the argument. The first one, you saw it right here, is privilege. Um, privilege. I mean, the way this woman did it from CNN, she went in, she felt, I don't need to look up who this guy is. I don't need to look up what this guy thinks. All I'm going to do, I'm assuming he's a conservative. I'm going to assume he's a white guy and I'm going to assume that he has all of this privilege. And, uh, she, and she didn't take a second to even second guess this notion. And then he tells her, I'm a black guy. I, uh, you, you've done no homework. You know nothing about me. But imagine if that host were a white guy, what could he have said? It would have convinced half the country, at least, if he had been a white guy. And she'd say, ah, but you have white privilege. And even though she can't explain how that manifests, it still would be convincing. This privilege thing is obviously an ad hominem attack. And it means that arguments are not as important as the arguer. That you should judge a person's argument based on the color of his skin or who he is or, or where he is, rather than the quality and content of his arguments. The, the thing that's funny about privilege, though, is that no privilege disqualifies anyone from conversation. What privilege would disqualify anyone from debate? In fact, privilege should overqualify you for debate, shouldn't it? If I, I've had the privilege of maybe a few extra brain cells than the average Joe on the street, maybe if I'm lucky, I've had the privilege of a good education from kindergarten all the way through college. Those are privileges which have actually prepared me better to think about certain things and to discuss certain ideas. That's a privilege of education. That's a good thing. That's not a a disqualification from debate. Uh, The left, as we talk about a lot, gets reality backwards. So what is a privilege? A privilege is a special advantage for one person or one group. That's a privilege. It's an advantage. What the left has turned privilege into is a disadvantage. They're saying that if you are privileged, You are now at a disadvantage. You can't give your opinion. Your opinion is invalid. Your your political work is invalid and your vision is invalid. It's it's as the left always does. It's perverting the thing into the opposite of the thing, the advantage into the disadvantage. And by the way, everybody has different privileges. I'm not suggesting that nobody has privilege. I'm not suggesting that everybody has privilege. If that were true, there'd be no such thing as privilege. But some people have different privileges. Some people are more athletically gifted. I'm not an Adonis of a man. They have more of a natural privilege in that regard than I do. Some people are more mathematically gifted. They have a, a privilege in that way. Some people are financially gifted. They're born into money. I met a lot of people in my life who were born into money. I was not, but Many people are. That's a privilege. That's an advantage. I'm not going to demonize that. I'm not going to vilify that. If you're born into money, good for you. I hope that helps your life and you get a good education and you you can enjoy all the pleasures in the world. Uh, Some people have other privileges. There is a privilege to not being born into money. And the privilege of that is you learn a little bit how the world really works. You, You can see more how most people are living. You can go through a little bit of suffering. Maybe that suffering helps to form your character, makes you stronger, makes you more more courageous. Maybe it makes you more daring or more ambitious. I've seen plenty of people born into wealth who become wastrels. And I've seen plenty of people who had nothing growing up really make something of themselves succeed at the highest level. Privilege is really hard to quantify in some hierarchy of victimhood, which is exactly what the left wants to do. We all uh, to varying degrees can have a privilege of reason. Some people are unreasonable. And some people have a very low privilege of reason, but, but if one has the privilege of reason, then you shouldn't say you have privilege so you're not allowed to speak. You should say you have that wonderful privilege of reason. Please use it. Please enlighten me and, and describe the world as you see it. The next one, which is very closely related, is mansplaining. Uh, this is also obviously an ad hominem attack. This is also an attack that says that the arguer is more important than the argument. Um, what, what mansplaining does, the funniest thing about that stupid word, is it's like manspreading. Manspreading is when men sit, but in, if they're sitting, these are their two legs. Instead of sitting with their legs crossed over one another really tight, they're sitting so that their legs are a little bit apart. The reason they do this, in case you didn't take high school biology class, is that they're making way for certain 
anatomical uh, privileges that, that only men have and women do not have. So there's a reason for this. It's a commonplace occurrence. Half of the population does it. The same thing with mansplaining. Mansplaining is when a man explains something. Now, we all explain things to each other. The reason we do it is because we're human beings with the faculties of speech. So we use speech, and speech is politics. Speech is civilization. We speak to one another. We don't grunt like the brutes most of the time, so we just talk and we persuade each other and we try to get each other to come around to our points of view and we learn and we instruct and we're curious and we ask questions. So that's just men explaining. What the term mansplaining does is it portrays as bizarre or strange when half of the population does the most basic human thing. That's supposed to be really weird and strange. So you're talking to a, a girl who's not girl understanding, to use Andrew Clavin's term, and she says, you're mansplaining. You say, damn right I'm mansplaining. How, what else can I do? I can't womansplain. I don't identify as a woman. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the way that they use this, of course, on the left, is that it's a way of shutting up half of the population. All it means, these phrases, check your privilege, these phrases mansplaining, it just means shut up. And the reason that they go after men is men are more likely to be conservative. Obviously, there are a lot of conservative women. There are a lot of very sad left-wing men. But uh, generally, men trend more conservative, uh, uh, and certainly in America. So they use it to shut up half the population. The other one they use is the, the phrases safety and comfort and safe space and that sort of thing. This is a little bit different, but it's playing on the same idea. It still means shut up. It's still a, a, a logical fallacy or a, or a discursive fallacy. Um, but what it does is when they say, your ideas are making me feel unsafe. The things you're saying are making me feel threatened. They're making me, th- I'm, I'm not in a place of comfort anymore. I hear this all the time when I go around to colleges. We speak at these colleges, we'll get protested, they'll I have, have, there have been student groups that have tried to shut us down with the administration, and they'll say the things that Michael is saying are unsafe. They make, they threaten us. But of course, what do they threaten? What am I talking? I'm talking about Edmund Burke, and that threatens them or something? Of course not. Uh, what they do is they conflate speech with violence. And so when the left, if you're having a conversation, when they accuse you of this, of threatening them, of, of making them feel unsafe, of making them not feel comfortable, what they are essentially doing is accusing you're speaking as physically assaulting and battering them. They're saying your words are punches. Your words are hurting me. It says uh, when, you, when you couple that with mansplaining, it's that if you're speaking to a woman and you're disagreeing with her, you're the equivalent of a wife beater because you're threatening her, you're making her unsafe, you're making her uncomfortable. That's, that's the third one. And then just one other. This is a broader observation in the culture, of it's being led by the left, it's being uh, weaponized by the left, is mental illness. Mental illness is all the rage these days. It's all anybody can talk about. It's used as an excuse to excuse terrible behavior. And it comes from a real place. Uh, young people are much more likely today to be anxious, to be stressed, to be depressed. An ASU study found that a quarter of college students are suffering PTSD because Donald Trump won the presidential election in 2016. Their rates of uh, suicide are increasing, and especially among young people. Teen suicide is up 70% now, and uh, rates of being Uh, prescribed these depression drugs, all of these SSRIs and those sorts of things are way up. They're also through the roof. So everybody thinks they have a mental problem. Everybody is on depression drugs. Constantly talking about mental illness, what it's really about is not the people, the, the few people who really could benefit from taking drugs all the time. Not the few people who have worked through their psychological problems and actually have a physical problem that requires medication. What this is about is relativism. This is what it's all about. You see it all the time on everyday feminism, on all the really far left-wing websites and podcasts. They all say that they have mental illness, and we need to talk about mental illness, and we need to describe mental illness. And the reason that they talk about mental illness all the time is because it, it brings to the fore different visions of reality, but not different visions of reality using right reasons, specifically different insane visions of reality to say, well, this person views things this way, and their, their 
mind is inaccessible to you. Because when people are sane, when they have mental health, we can use our faculties of reason to communicate with one another. And we're speaking about an objective outside world. But if everybody is a little crazy, if everybody is a little kooky, nobody's really accessing the objective world in the right way, then we don't have access to objectivity anymore. We don't have access to reality anymore. We're back in the tyranny of subjectivism. We're back in the tyranny of our feelings. We can't talk about facts, as we say here on The Daily Wire a lot. We have to talk about feelings, and nobody can be wrong, and nobody can be right. Every opinion is valid. Everything is your truth or my truth or this truth or that truth. This is why the left is focused on that. This is why not necessarily on CNN or The Washington Post, but when you go to the really more fringy, more radical left-wing websites, blogs, podcasts, that's what they're focusing on. It is not out of compassion for people who have psychological problems. Very often, by the way, people who have psychological problems have philosophical problems. The issue isn't the synapses in their brain. The issue is how they're living their lives and how they view the world and how they view themselves in relation not only to their creator, but the, the rest of the creation. And so they talk about that not out of compassion for those people, but they do it as a way of advancing their base agenda, which they've had now for at least 50 or 60 years, which is radical uh, subjectivism. Speaking of mental illness and speaking of radical subjectivism, this uh, video first cropped up on the internet I guess really between Christmas and New Year's, but because everybody was shut down in the commentary, we haven't gotten a chance to talk about it. We have to talk about it. This is a transgender guy, so a guy who dresses as a woman, goes into some store and starts losing his mind, because, losing what's left of his mind, because he thinks that somebody has referred to him a six-foot-two giant man.